The Art of War is supposed to be the first book about military strategy and was written by Sun Chu or Sun Chi, like I think it's originally, who lived about 500 years before Christ. The Ancient Art of War was published 1984 by a brother band for DOS and Apple II computers and is supposed to be one of the first real-time strategy computer games. The game consists of two parts, like the Total War series in a way, but both are more or less real-time. In the world map you see your armies and can move them around by keyboard commands. If an enemy unit is close, you go into battle by pressing Z for zoom, and then you see the units that your army is made of. Here you can command even the separate troops, so the archers, barbarians or knights, for example letting the archers shoot while the enemy approaches and when he gets closer and has already lost some troops, let your melee units attack him. When you are thrown into a map, the first thing you usually do is set the formations for all your armies, cause otherwise your archers may stand in the first line, surely being slaughtered by the enemy barbarians or knights. Or you place your melee units, that friendly fire is more unlikely, cause that's already there. Sometimes you can try to decimate your opponent's army by a huge archer attack and then retreat them before he can reach your men. Then your army will be thrown behind a little, even losing condition, but you can easily and without many losses bring him down with your next army. Optically there are a lot of backgrounds, even hills or forts, that give you big advantages. All in all, more than, for example, in the 1989 North and South real-time strategy game that had even less tactical possibilities. And everything doesn't look that bad, at least if you don't expect deeply animated troops doing their own personal fights or photorealistic graphics. But there is so much more to the game, because until now this might have worked for most developers, but they included a ton of more mechanics. Your troops can be split, joined or the troops exchanged, and you can control this manually completely, so exactly what units you want to separate or join. Since there are only three and the shortcuts are logical, so A for archers and so on, this can be made very fast, although everything is done via keyboard and in real time. Pressing I gives you infos like food or condition of your troops or the enemies, just like S for size and so you can think how to answer his enemy, which formation would be good and then prepare your plan. Villages give food and condition, so resting there strengthens your army again and you may even be able to be the stronger one that is weakened. There is also a possibility to set your marching speed. That is crucial in some maps, but faster movement will weaken the condition of your troops much earlier. In your castle you receive support, so new troops that are gathered randomly. Another reason to divide your armies, cause the more armies there are, the more reinforcements there will be. When you start you choose the map you want to play, that is the mission somehow, and the conditions of it, so the ones that are given or you would change them a little bit to your liking or advantage. And then the enemy leader, that's the difficulty, in the order left above to right below. Then you study the map and your goals, cause here the game unfolds the real strategic moments. Sometimes it's a very clear direct fight, sometimes you are outnumbered or even in a position that is so bad that you may have to sacrifice troops to be able to get your reinforcements to the main area. Sometimes you have to hold a place to be able to capture the enemy flags instead of going all in with your troops. 
direct attacking may therefore not always win. Also thinking about using the whole map, finding a new way may get you with the enemy flag. And that is the ultimate goal. So to hold all flags on the map and therefore winning a fight might be less more important than being faster or finding new ways. And of course, to use all the things like the forts, reinforcements or villages to strengthen your troops. Okay, you can also win by defeating all enemy troops, but that is very often much harder or sometimes even impossible. But there is even more, like a fog of war. That does not inflict the map, but you may not see enemy troops until they are closer or a little bit earlier if you have a spy. And there are other ideas as well, like in one map you have to find the best way to the enemy flag, like he has two, cause this is a speed mission and already a variation that shows that you can do much more with this game. Like as well in the spy quest, where you spy a unit that will surrender when enemies are close, cause it cannot fight, has to capture the enemy flag before they capture yours. But the fog of war doesn't let you find the way easily, and the enemy has a lot of troops to bring you down. Go here, try this, move fast, slow, get food in the village. You have to try it out, and like all missions, you're not meant to win in the first try. You really have to find a way for the map you play. And since there are so many possibilities, there's more thinking involved than just the real-time fights done right. And you can do them wrong, like not being there when they present swords and therefore will go into action soon. You have to reach the armies and press set in a certain amount of time, otherwise the computer will fight for you and like in Total War, you're normally better in that, as if you let only numbers do the working. When you're in a fight, then you have to press A for attack and then either SA, so squad attack to make everyone charge, or your separate units. This is muscle memory to be fast, so when you're out of the rhythm, you may lose like everything, cause you never get your troops to attack. Like forgetting the A for attack in the beginning, so starting with S maybe for squad attack, then they will do nothing, but then you press the A and so they do the attack that was there meant to be for attacking originally, but then you're in your rhythm and go on with the S, so again the squad attack, but now this is a stop command. Well, it's hard to tell if you never experienced that, but it will surely break your heart to lose everyone because of what otherwise is giving you the advantage because you're faster. Sometimes your troops may be caught in some kind of loop, especially when you do the all archer attack and retreat then and your army is not really set further what might happen sometimes. Then it may be stuck in this kind of loop, either giving up your troops or being able to decimate the enemy completely in the end. And there are other things to drive you mad, cause you really have to find them out by playing and they may bomb your tactics when you're experiencing them for the first time. Like your troops in the fort that have always an advantage when you have archers. You will mostly shoot much more enemies than vice versa because you're standing on the walls. But only if the army is placed close to the wall of the fort. Otherwise the yard is chosen as a battlefield. Like when you don't have any archers, and then your tactics so the archers decimating the enemy might not work as supposed. Here I am playing the Ega version by name, but it is set to VGA, that looks really good. But some might have played the CTA version, that looks like this. Today you can play the game for free on numerous websites. I will put some links in the description, so check them out if you like. The Ega version was the right tempo, I think. I played it simply in the browser. The CTA one was much too fast, so you have to use the DOS box settings to slow it down on your own and it will not work in the browser. But beware, the game is much more complicated than you might expect and without really getting into the missions, 
There is no chance to win this 40-year-old game. 